I'm Andrea, developer, and I have been working with Scotland Monte Platform Mobile about nine, nine months, starting when it becomes uh, alpha. And yeah, I would like to share with you my experience. I will share my screen and we'll go through, through the presentation together. Do you see that presentation? Yes. Great. So, uh, first of all, let's go through our agenda. Uh, first, we will talk about introduction, then how Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile works, and the environment which we need to set up before we can work with that technology. Also, uh, how to create new first project with Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile, and we'll go through the project structure. Uh, also, we will go through the platform specific code and how it can be useful for us. And then I will share with you my small sample. And then we will have QA session. And also I created a few links uh, for you, which can be useful if you want to go to know more about Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile. So, first of all, what is Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile? It's SDK for a cross-platform mobile development, and it consists of uh, two basic features. First of them is Kotlin Multiplatform. Uh, Kotlin Multiplatform uh, contains multi-platform Kotlin uh, domain-specific language, Kotlin GVM, Kotlin native, and also Kotlin Multiplatform contains uh, Kotlin uh, JavaScript, but I did not put it here as we are only talking about Kotlin Multiplatform mobile. Uh, also, it contains mobile features such as Android uh, Studio plugin and Cocoa Pods integration. Uh, we will see how it works uh, a little bit later. So, uh, why Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile? First of all, I think that um, before learning something new, we should know why we need this. So, a Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile can be useful for you when you are developing SDK because your SDK can be shared between Android developers, iOS developers, and also developers which will, who will develop um, SDK for Kotlin multi-platform, uh, multi mobile uh, users also. Also, uh, it's writing business logic only once. As we know, when we are starting writing, uh, creating two projects, Android and iOS one, uh, we are writing business logic twice. And also we are writing tests twice. And sometimes uh, it's uh, better to spend that time for testing even together and even selecting more interesting test cases and test business logic twice, but write it only once. Also easy testing, as I told. Um, first of all, is that you are writing tests only once uh, second, that this test can be run on both platforms for Android and for iOS. And also uh, the great uh, part here is that uh, is uh, that your logic, your test, your business logic is separated and that means that it will be easy testable. As you know, sometimes when uh, developers are writing uh, the apps, they are forget forgetting to separate the business logic from uh, UI part. And in that cases, uh, we have bad testable code. Also, it's supporting native and iOS features. Uh, that means that here you can use uh, expect actual pattern, which I will show you later. Uh, this uh, pattern will help you to use uh, native Android and iOS libraries. Uh, with shared code um, instead of trying to, to find a shared solution if there are not one, no one, no such solution. Also, no performance issues. Uh, so uh, shared code written um, is uh, written in Java uh, or written a uh, shared code, which is written in uh, Kotlin, uh, is uh, compiling to Java byte code and uh, also is compiling to native binaries for iOS. That means that there is no performance issues when you are running your code. Uh, so, and also the simple integra uh, integration with existing project, which means that uh, uh, 
doesn't matter if you already started project uh, or you are just starting it. Uh, you can create a Kotlin multi-platform mobile SDK for your apps and share it. Also, yeah. So, but why not Kotlin multi-platform mobile? There are some issues where um, this technology will be not useful for you. First of all, it's when a majority of the code is UI logic and there is a no no space to separate business logic or you will spend too much time for that only one platform is going to be supported yeah as i told previously uh, it's useful when you are going to create two apps not one and component stability there is a for now a huge problem with component stability as you see calling gvm only is stable and yeah, it's um, a small problem because sometimes you will have uh, bugs which, um, you, which you are not expecting to see there. We will see uh, one uh, when we will create a new project. Also, as you see that Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile plugin is only experimental. And when I was creating a such project, I was creating it by hand. It, it took much more time than now as plugin is helping, yeah, but there are, there are some small bugs with that plugin also. Also, Kotlin native is uh, runtime is better, which is good for us. And what is also important that expect actual language feature is better, which means that we can um, use that and there will be only small bugs will, will be fixed. So, uh, let's talk how it works. As you see in the center, uh, Kotlin, uh, common Kotlin. It contains a uh, Kotlin uh, core. Also, it contains basic libraries uh, for Kotlin, which can be shared and, and basic frameworks. Uh, the next level, as you see, it's Kotlin GVM and Kotlin nat native. Uh, it contains uh, special libraries um, for Kotlin GVM and Kotlin native separately. Also, it contains um, Kotlin language extension for, uh, for Kotlin GVM and for Kotlin native. And uh, also, as you see, uh, GVM, GVM code and native code where you can use your library or SDK. So how a compiler is working? Uh, first of all, um, uh, during I think um, I think few weeks ago there was a presentation with uh, with Kotlin one point five, and they presented uh, a little bit updated compiler for Kotlin multi platform. Uh, I removed from uh, from the solution uh, JavaScript part because it's like not interesting for now uh, for us now, but uh, now. Compiler is a uh, dividing work for, in two parts. They're calling it front end and back end. Uh, we are writing uh, files, uh, Kotlin files, and after that, using the front end, compile creating intermediate representation. Intermediate representation is a data structure which represents the source code. And uh, after that, uh, Backend start to to compile your code into the into the byte code, into the native binaries. So uh, in this case, uh, as I know previously, uh, only only the native part native uh, native backend is uh, in our situation is working for iOS, and previously uh, native backend was working compiler was working in the in the same way, but uh, GVM compiler was working in a little bit another way and Kotlin team decided to update that. Uh, and in front end, they, were, uh, they are going to put all the, um, all the uh, code part, so uh, to detect the updates of different languages and so on to make the compiler faster. But currently, the compiler is not so fast, and they're going to present that in a, in a new version of Kotlin. So yeah, the front end is going to be faster, so it's in active development. So 
Um, so uh, when we are developing SDK, uh, we are creating Kotlin model. And that uh, model is compiling to the uh, framework for the Kotlin native and to the jar for uh, Kotlin GVM. And uh, our apps are using framework or jar depends on which app it is. So environment setup. Uh, first of all, uh, you will need Android Studio. Also, you can try to use IntelliJ IDEA I already tried to use that. In some cases, uh, it is better and faster, uh, but uh, sometimes there is problem with support Android project, and I stopped at that moment using IntelliJ IDEA. Maybe now they fix that, but yeah, I didn't check it one more time. So with Android Studio, you should have Gradle and Java development kit, and also after that, you should install Kotlin plugin. And if you would like, you can also install a Kotlin multi-platform mobile plugin, which will help you to, uh, to create project and man manage some more things. And also Xcode, if you would like to have iOS project. Uh, if you are going only to develop Android, um, Android application, and in future uh, want to have iOS uh, project, uh, you can just separate your uh, business logic into separate model and not, uh, and not making it multi-platform. But in future, if you will need that, you will make faster your migration to Kotlin multi-platform mobile. And maybe it will be more stable. Uh, yeah, so creating first Kotlin multi-platform mobile project. So uh, we can do that using Kotlin multi-platform mobile plugin and also by hand in Android, in Android Studio or IntelliJ IDEA. I will, uh, I will show you how to do that with Kotlin multi-platform mobile plugin uh, as it's faster and I can show you some more cases. So uh, here I already have the project, the sample, which I'm going to show you, but uh, we will try now to create a new project. Sorry. So uh, after you installed Kotlin Mobile a multi-platform multi uh, plugin in your Android Studio uh, and restart it, uh, you will see in the new project's possibility to create Kotlin multi-platform mobile application. Here, as it's usual, you will select the, the name, package name, and so on. So it will be... Uh, and sorry, already exist. So uh, so here we will select a name for the Android application and iOS application and the name of the, of the shared model. What I'm recommending is for now leave the names as they are or select for now different names and then if you want to, of course, you, you want often to change the name to the same. Because as a Kotlin multi-platform uh, mobile plugin is a really experimental, uh, if you are selecting the same name, uh, the same name for iOS and Android application, the project will, create, will be created in the, um, in, the one, uh, in the one folder. So iOS and Android files uh, will be put in the one folder. And yeah, there can be problem with understanding where which files are and yeah, it's like not comfortable. Also here, as you see, there is possibility to select Cocoa Pods dependency manager or regular, regular framework. Uh, I'm often using a regular framework because as I know, not all iOS developers like Cocoa Pods. And also um, it's more simple for me to control where that framework is. Yeah. So after that, uh, the new project will be created. Here we can select project and we can go uh, to the project structure. So project structure contains common part, iOS part, and Android part. 
uh, how uh, we can see that in code. As you see here, uh, what is the most interesting for us? It's three uh, models: it iOS app, Android app, and shared one. Now we are discussing a shared one, and so here we have common code, Android, and iOS code. Common code, it's shared code, which can be run on both platforms. Uh, here is like Hello World sample, and the same for Android and iOS. Also, important for us is to take a look on build Gradle file. And yeah, here we have um, in the source set, so here we have target iOS, and source sets. As you see, here we have uh, more source sets than models, uh, than uh, folders in the uh, shared model. Uh, Kotlin Multiplatform mobile plugin also prepared for us common test, uh, Android test, and iOS test part. So here, as you see, we can put our dependencies, like for common test and for Android test, and so on. Also, what is uh, important for us if we are not using um, CocoaPods integration, it's this task, uh, pack for Xcode. This task will generate for us framework, which we are using in our iOS app. Uh, yeah, I will show, uh, to not open uh, one more time the, the sample here, iOS project, I will show you the um, iOS settings here. Uh, in the in the sample which I prepared. So what is important for us that in project there is only uh, already framework, our shared framework, and also here in the build phases uh, we have script for uh, regenerating pack for Xcode each time when you will run your app. It's important because when you would like to update your business logic uh, and after that test iOS app with that business logic, you just need to, to run the app and it will rebuild back for Xcode one more time. But when you are, for example, did a clean a Gradle build clean, you should first time run package for Xcode uh, by hands or using uh, or using tasks here, find pack for Xcode and run it, uh, because first time it will not gen uh, regenerate that. Yeah. So, platform specific code. Uh, platform specific code gives us a possibility to write a platform, um, to use platform specific libraries and do, uh, do for your project something more than only uh, shared code can. Uh, I will show you how it looks in code. One, one moment. Yeah, I already closed that. So, uh, so here, for example, uh, we have uh, we have expected class which means that uh, it's the signature of the class uh, and how the class will look like, but uh, the actual code we will, uh, we will write in, um, in our platform specific folders. So as you see here, we have three that files, platform, platform and platform in our folders iOS, Common, and uh, Android. Also here you can see that you can go through the actual um, actual code. So here, for example, if we would like to look on the actual code for iOS, we can see that uh, here we are using uh, UI kit to get the device name. But for Android, the solution should be a little bit another. So in Android case, uh, we are uh, we are taking we are writing Android and taking the Android version. Yeah. So uh, this is the uh, the small sample from the Kotlin Multiplatform mobile team. How the uh, expect actual code looks like. 
and we will go in samples through that a, li a little bit more. So, but if, for example, for Android, we can import all GVM libraries for iOS, uh, there is no possibility to import um, all the iOS libraries. Uh, Kotlin supports only, uh, only interoperability with Objective-C dependencies and Swift dependencies. If their APIs are exported to Objective-C with uh, Objective-C attribute. And per, uh, per Swift dependencies are not yet supported. So previously, when I was when I had idea to create sample for you, I wanted to create um, to create palette with colors. And in Android, I can use it like Android graphics uh, library to get color there, color class, or use uh, int. And uh, for iOS. I was thinking to use uh, color, but there was uh, only color from UI kit. And from there is no possibility to use a color class from Swift UI. But yeah, I had the idea that Swift UI is now more, uh, more useful and that is not really great idea to use only UI kit uh, library, uh, library or or color class from there. So yeah, you should know that there can be problems with reusing uh, classes from your uh, Swift UI library. Yeah. So let's take a look on sample which I prepared. So my idea was to create uh, a small sample with a list of books uh, as, as I'm often uh, having and using uh, and reading books in different apps like Kindle or Google Books. Sometimes, sometimes I am forgetting where that book is, for example, and yeah, and such library sample. So uh, here, as you see, we have um, the same main three models. Each shared one. Here, I also added some more tests. With, uh, we will go through them a little bit later. And here I created like a small uh, book data class. Also, I, uh, I, I created a small library API and uh, yeah, and library repository. Uh, what is important for us? And, uh, and uh, also I've added one more class which will create ID for the books as sometimes uh, when I am receiving book or when I am uh, writing the book in the JSON file, I am forgetting to create any unique UID. And I decided to create unique UID here if ID was not presented in, uh, in JSON file, which I received uh, currently from JSON blob. I put a JSON file there. So um, I have, for the ID, I am using a method to create, uh, create a unique identifier. And if you can see that it's only expected function. So you know that a function will look like that, but you don't know uh, how uh, it will work on both platforms. So you can click here and go to the expected Java code. Here I'm using a, a Java library and to generating a random ID. And also uh, we can go through the uh, iOS part. Here I am using foundation and using, um, and using that library and generating uh, ID here. So ID will be, generating, uh, will be generating for different platforms uh, by different way. Also, what is important here that, as previously I told, we have pack for X code. This, uh, this task will generate for us framework and also dependencies, which I uh, added there. So what is also important for us, it's coroutines. Uh, coroutines is, uh, is uh, uh, lightweight uh, threads and for now, uh, 
they really they have a multi-platform mobile support but uh, they have only support for one thread and to use a uh, multi-thread in there we should go uh, we should select library with native mt it because they are going uh, kotlin team going to update uh, the way uh, uh, the way some uh, multi-threading uh, parts are working because sometimes there can be now memory leaks and they are also writing that in their uh, documentation so they are going to update that and that's why they created separate branch also i am using uh, i am using tor as a http client and as i am using tor I should strictly write here one more time the coroutines version as Tor is using also coroutines. And I'm using serialization to deserialize a JSON file. Also, here you can see that for, um, for common test, I've added um, two more dependencies. So when you are creating the project, there will be only two dependencies presented. Test common and test annotations common. And also, I've added, uh, um, I've added, oh, I added it one more, uh, two more times, sorry. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, I've added uh, the, um, the Android main, it's Ktor also. And for tests, I've added here uh, coroutines. And uh, for iOS, uh, I was, uh, I've added here a uh, client, a Tor client also. Yeah, I think I should. Uh, okay, I'll um, do that later. So, uh, here we have a repository uh, and two methods, a fetch books. Uh, the one method is suspend and one will run in the coroutine scope which you can input or here with uh, main scope. And library API, here it's, uh, we have also fetch books function. Uh, this function is also suspend and suspend functions can be called only from uh, coroutine scope. And when this uh, method uh, begin to run, uh, it's uh, suspend uh, the work of coroutine and um, and after it will finish the request uh, it will go back, back here and yeah continue sending you the the books so uh, i also added tests uh, one more time so for example, it's a really simple test, which can show us that the test can be right only once for two platforms. So here you can run test for uh, iOS and Android. Uh, one, one moment. So we have shared, we have verification and here. Here we can run iOS test and we can run Android test, for example. I think that can there can be one problem. Yeah, it's Android tests and iOS tests. I'm guessing. Yeah, so the, uh, this test uh, can be run for two platforms, by, but, uh, run, but you can write it only once. But what uh, if we will look on the repository? So there, as I told previously, there are suspend functions. I, uh, I specially created library, uh, um, library API um, interface because for now there is no uh, mock library for Kotlin multi-platform mobile testing. And yeah, it's a small problem, but uh, as I know, mock, fun, uh, mock company is working uh, on that to support uh, mobile multi-platform, but it's still not done. 
So for now, I just um, create small test API using my, uh, I implement this interface and create my suspend function, which will return books, uh, which I put it there. So in our situation, we should uh, check if, um, if fetching books is working. So if our repository is getting books from the API. In this situation, as you see, I've added function run test. Uh, it's because, yeah, there is a problem with, uh, with coroutines and with testing suspend functions. And uh, now there is no uh, one library which can be used. So coroutines test a library is working only for Android. S so I created such expected function and I created uh, the same uh, function in Android test here. So uh, yeah, uh, here it will run, it was run blocking test with, uh, with coroutines test library. But as this library is not working for iOS now, in iOS um, package, uh, there is a little bit another solution. So we are running only run blocking. And this, um, and this test in this situation will run that function uh, if you will make it that run to, for two different platforms so for ios and android you can you can check if that uh, fudge books is uh, fetching the books from the api yeah and updated that there are only um, for uh, in kotlin test there are not so much functions which you can use. Also, uh, I did not found the the solution for running um, function with um, with list of parameters. So, uh, yeah. So there is no for now no way to do that using just creating a list of um, a list of parameters and run that one functions with all the all that list of parameters, but you can write that code by your hand, create that function which will run, uh, which will run this function with your list, list of parameters. So yeah, for now solutions are like they are. <laughs> and yeah, and we can now go into the Android parts. So, yeah. so here, uh, here, first of all, uh, I created view model in Android and in iOS. I created I created a view model. Here, I decided to use dependency injection for the library repository. But yeah, uh, so uh, here, as you see, we have uh, live data uh, of our list of books. And uh, in the scope of new model, we are trying to fetch that books. And also we can take a look on iOS sample. So here I used, uh, yeah, I used Swift UI also. Here you can see import shared. It means that uh, this is our shared framework. We can rename it run out how you want. So you can select uh, name, whatever you want. And yeah, and you should rename your framework and then um, rename the import here. Uh, here I was, um, I was create, I created uh, observable object with also list of books and uh, yeah, and fetching here is in separate, in separate function. Uh, because from the uh, from the Swift UI, I'm calling it when the UI is appearing, when the view is appearing. So we uh, I already run that app, but we can do it one more time. So I didn't add like loaders or something like that. Oh, I run not correct sample, sorry. 
So here, as we previously uh, ran iOS test, we should select in Android Studio Android app and run it. We can write. So this sample with the view model also is showing that like repository can be reused uh, and also created uh, in your native Android and iOS code. So here, yeah, I already put it here at the list of uh, the list of books as in uh, iOS. So just receiving the uh, JSON file and serialize it. Also, what is important for us as for developers is how to debug. With Android app, uh, it's simple. Uh, you can put breakpoint also in shared uh, in shared code and run debug. But how to be with iOS? For now, uh, with help of Kotlin multi-platform mobile plugin, we can also debug uh, iOS app here. We should in Android Studio select an uh, iOS app and also uh, and also we can debug it here by putting breakpoint. So, for example, we can do that by putting, I don't know, let's put the breakpoint here and yeah. So we should wait. So yeah, now we can uh, we can take a look, like in which thread uh, the code is running, and check whatever you want, like variables or some other stuff. So uh, also, what is uh, important? important uh, debugging and also documentation. Uh, on, on the project where I was working, we are using a Docker plugin which supports Kotlin multi-platform mobile. And without, with help of that, uh, you can generate documentation for your both of sources, which is also really, um, really simple if you have SDK uh, generating that documentation and writing that documentation only once. Yeah, here I put it a uh, sample. And as I told previously, shared code for functions and tests. Also test with expect actual. Yeah, and that's all for now from my side. Maybe you have any questions. Sorry, can everyone hear me? Yes, I hear you. Great. Maybe 